All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for our Quiz Bowl Pro training. <clears throat> My name is Rodney Holt. I am a quick recall trainer in Region 1, and I am joined today with Mr. Victor Cluck with um, Quiz Bowl Pro. And uh, what we're going to do today is give you an overview of the tech side of Quiz Bowl Pro, and then I'm going to do a simulation uh, match with you all just to kind of show you how it works, what it looks like, and any questions or concerns you may have, put them in the chat, and we will uh, address those as we get them. Yes, and in this first portion of the, uh, of the workshop, I'll be presenting and my co-presenter will be looking at the chat log, and then when it's turn for Rodney to take the stage, then I'll be watching the chat log. But as Rodney said, uh, if your question is relevant to what we're talking about right at that very instant, we'll stop and, and answer it. Otherwise, we'll, we'll wait till these two sections are over to address them. But we will answer every one of your questions. So are we ready to begin? I'm ready. Okay. So uh, once again, I'm Victor Cluck with Quiz Bowl Systems. And my objective in this very brief uh, presentation is to help you understand how you're going to get tech ready for online competition, because there are a variety of technologies uh, that are involved in uh, doing online competition successfully. Think of it as making a stew or a soup, a whole bunch of things that go into that. Uh, the first ingredient is a conferencing system, such as the one we're using right now. This is Zoom, right? Yes. Okay, so we're using Zoom so that we can hear each other and we can see each other. Now think about quick recall. Quick recall is primarily an audio exercise. It's verbal. Uh, you need a system like Zoom or Google Meet or GoToMeeting or something else so that the students can hear you reading the questions and you can hear them giving their answers. You also need to be able to get them on camera so that you can make sure that uh, Ken Jennings isn't signed in as, and playing on, you know, instead of whoever you think the, the player is, you wanna be able to see them. So that's the conferencing system. Uh, another ingredient is the online competition system, which in this case is Quiz Bowl Pro. And you're gonna get a demonstration of that a little bit later in this workshop. You also have uh, another technology ingredient is a, is a host device. And, and when I say host, I mean you running Quiz Bowl Pro. Uh, if you want to use the term buzzer operator, that's fine. If you want to use the term electronic scorekeeper, that's fine. So when I say host, think of the person who's running the online competition system. Now, you have a device, for example, a PC that you're using, and you're connecting to the internet using some sort of, of uh, connection. You might be wired with an internet cable. You might be using Wi-Fi, or if you're using a cell phone, you might be using your data plan. So those are variables as well. Then there are the players' devices themselves. And you know, the players have us outnumbered eight to one in every match. There's one buzzer operator and there are eight students playing. So there's a lot of variety uh, on their end. They might be using anywhere from a cell phone to a tablet to a computer. And we're far less in control of what they're using than what we're using. And then we have absolutely no control over what networks they're using if they're participating from home or someplace other than in your school. They could be using, you know, I don't know what your, your internet service providers are in Kentucky. Uh, here we have a variety of them. You might be using RCN or Comcast or who knows, but, but the point is we're not in charge of those. So those are variables as well. And all of these ingredients are involved in conducting online competition successfully. So you want to get on top of which combination of these works for you and stay there. If, if I want to provide you with a spoiler uh, for my whole presentation, it's go to your happy place. Find a place that works both for you and your players and stay there. Don't, don't uh, practice, you know, three, four weeks in one place and have success and then change locations on competition day. That would be that would be a bad thing to do. The good thing to do is figure out where you're going to be, what kind of environment you're going to be in for the competition, and practice in that environment the whole time. 
Okay, so the big two ingredients out of all those are the conferencing system and the competition system. And remember, the conferencing system is what's getting you audio and video. It's what it's what you're using to see and hear me and Rodney. And I get asked this all the time, so I want to go out of my way to, to make special mention of this. I'm often asked, how do I show the Quiz Bowl Pro scoreboard to the players who aren't in the match, the, the top four for both schools? You might have 10 players on your roster, but only four playing at a time. How do I show my Quiz Bowl Pro scoreboard to the six players on my team who aren't in the match and also to the opposing coach and also show the scoreboard to maybe other people that are watching? Well, you don't do that with Quiz Bowl Pro. You do it with a conferencing system, the same same way that, that that you're teaching right now. Many of you are teaching virtually. You're showing your screen through the conferencing system. So that's how you'll do that. So that's the that's the conferencing system. And the other main ingredient or big ingredient is the online competition system. The online competition system is used two different ways. Uh, first. You use it to set up your teams, you know, the player names within each team's roster, and you use it to set up your matches. And you can set up matches ahead of time, and you can see uh, in Rodney's portion of this presentation how that's done. The other way you use the online competition system is uh, you as a host use the system to run the match as the buzzer operator. And the players are also using it in the sense that they're logging into a match ID that you give them and that's how they're able to participate. So if, if I could wish for anything on your behalf, it would be that in every match, you have one person running the conferencing system and a different person running Quiz Bowl Pro and doing spotting and ring in winners. You can do it as one person. You can do both of those jobs, but it'd be far easier for you if, for example, one coach uh, in, in the match ran or monitored the conferencing system and maybe muted and unmuted people. Uh, when they rang in so you could get their answers and somebody else was running Quiz Bowl Pro. Let me stop here for a second and, and uh, take a breath and, and ask my uh, co-presenter if there are any chat questions that we ought to address at this point. None at this time, sir. Okay, <clears throat> let's move on. So with respect to your device and network, that's one of the ingredients in this process. Think about this. When are you going to compete? Let's say that you're going to compete in Governor's Cup. What is it, February something? Uh, actually starting in a couple weeks. Okay. Where are you going to be on that day that you're competing? Ask yourself that question. Are you going to be in the classroom? Are you going to be at home? Or are you going to be somewhere else? Wherever it is you're going to be on that day, try to practice from that location. So look ahead, see where you're going to be. And in that environment, do the following. Use a PC instead of a tablet or a Chromebook. Now, you can use a tablet or a Chromebook, but a PC has more horsepower. It has a larger display. It'll be easy for you to see everything that's going on. Uh, and we feel that it handles sounds better. And we'll talk about sound a little bit later. Uh, that's just a recommendation. It's not that you can't use a tablet or a Chromebook. And if you have a choice of browsers, although almost all of them work, Internet Explorer being the exception. We suggest you use Chrome as your browser. We test with Chrome. It's sort of where we live. So I think you'll have a good experience if you use Chrome. And these are just recommendations. Uh, this is not a recommendation. You should always test your connection. We, we put a specific capability on our website called Test Connection, and I'm going to put it in the chat log. So you're going to see the, the, the link here in just a moment. Let's see if I can get it there. Oh, let me go and copy it. Hang on. You're going to watch me move over to my, I'm going to go to the test connection page. I'm going to cut and paste this connection link, and I'm going to put that in the chat log. Okay. All of you that are on the call, please go to that link and test your connection to the system. What that's gonna do is attempt to connect your device to our cloud-based competition system. And it should come back rather quickly and tell you everything's good. And if it doesn't, it's gonna come back and recommend some things to you that you should look into. So it's a really, really good idea for you to test that connection before you start a match, make sure everything's good. Same thing goes for the players. 
I'll make that point on the next slide. Uh, I got a little ahead of myself, but it's a good idea to do that. On whatever device you're using as the buzzer operator, you should turn off your screen savers and turn off any power saving features that might be active. And just as I'm doing now with a headset, we'd recommend that you use a headset if you can to improve audio quality. If you use your computer's built-in microphone and speakers, that microphone will pick up lots of noise, lots of ambient noise that's in the room where you are. It might pick up echo, might create feedback. So if you can use a headset, it really cleans up the audio quality. But if you use a headset, that means the ring-in sound when a player rings in will, will sound in your headset and not to the group of players. So use an external speaker like this. This is a Bluetooth speaker that I have in my office, or you could use external uh, speakers on your computer so that when somebody rings in and there's a ding, then your microphone will pick up that sound. You can also play sounds on the player's devices. Rodney may show you how to do that in, in just a few minutes, but do this from where you think you're gonna be on competition day. Then with respect to the players, devices and networks, you need to teach them to think the same way. Where are they gonna be when you hold your match? If they're gonna be at home, this is where they should do the following. If they can use a cell phone with a data plan, like an unlimited data plan, we'd recommend that instead of using a PC with Wi-Fi. I get a lot of pushback on this, so I'm gonna stay here and explain this. If you're at home on a Wi-Fi router, chances are you're not alone. So you're sharing that Wi-Fi's signal with other members of your household. So you're not getting the whole bandwidth of that router. Whereas if you've got your own cell phone, all of that bandwidth on your cell phone network is available to you. So if I could draw a future for you that you'd find to be very successful, it would be for your players to be competing with cell phones and to, to sign into Zoom or Google Meet or whatever on one browser tab, but then leave the system logged into Quizbowl Pro on their cell phone, because they can do both. That one device can do both. Use Chrome as a browser, just like I recommended for you as the buzzer operator, if you have a choice and they should test their connection as well. That should be rule number one for anybody getting into the system. Go test your connection, make sure nothing's changed in your network. And this is especially important for the players themselves. Make sure they turn off their screen savers and any power saving features. And you know, most of us have a setting on our cell phones where the, the, the device will go to sleep like mine has after about 30 seconds. You'll, you'll want your players to extend that screen timeout time to something uh, in minutes instead of seconds. I would recommend, you know, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Because when their screen goes dark, it'll appear that they've logged out. And they won't be able to ring in. It'll take them just a second to wake their phone up to be able to ring in. In that amount of time, they may lose out on a toss up. And just like I recommended a headset for you as buzzer operators, we recommend the same thing or earbuds uh, for each of the players to improve the audio quality. So all these things I've talked about up to this point are about getting ready. The next slide details some things that you should think about at game time or play time. And, and I've labeled this, if you should find yourself in a ditch. Um, if you get into an environment like, like we're in right now, an online meeting, if you hear audio feedback, the first thing you ought to do is, is mute all the microphones and then turn one on at a time to figure out whose device is causing the feedback. You probably already are well aware of, of, of this concept because you've been teaching virtually for so long, but you have the power to mute all the microphones and then selectively figure out which one's causing the trouble. Um, also, if you get into a match and everybody is working fine, but one player's device audio isn't working, they can't hear you or you can't hear them. Remember, they can still be logged in to Quiz Bowl Pro and be able to compete, but they can also dial into the conference itself. They don't have to use their computer to dial in. Most of our conferencing systems, go to a go to meeting, Zoom that Rodney's using right now, have a dial-up number that you could dial. So there's another advantage for a player using a cell phone. They could just dial into the audio. And if anything doesn't look quite right in the Quiz Bowl Pro program, your friend is the refresh button. 
And that's true for players as well. If anything doesn't look quite right, hit your refresh button. Uh, it's an option your students, I'm sure, are well aware of. You should find out where your refresh button is on your browser, and you may need it once or twice in a match. And if a player can't get connected to Quiz Bowl Pro, ask them to use a different device. This happened about 30 minutes ago. One of your colleagues, one of your fellow coaches in Kentucky wrote me, and they, they left me an email saying that one of their players wasn't able to connect. And... I, I wrote this person a response, but when I sent that response, I got something back from this coach that indicated, oh, never mind. We just had this player use a different device and they got in and they're fine. So it's all water under the bridge. So remember, it doesn't matter which device you use, it just needs to work. And you should always have a backup and you should have a backup as well. You know, find a device, a PC, MacBook or whatever that's going to work for you. But keep in mind that Technology is technology. You should always have a plan B. You should always uh, have a backup as well. And I skipped over one thing here where I said, or just ring in for them manually. You know, if you have a severe technology problem where one player can't get connected to Quiz Bowl Pro, no matter how hard they try, but they want to participate in the match, Rodney's going to show you in a few minutes how you can actually ring in for them manually. Okay, last slide, and then we'll turn it over. Uh, to the, the more fun aspect of this presentation. Since you're working with so many technology ingredients and so many players who are probably distant from one another, you know, they're not in a position to be next to one another in a classroom where they can reach over and help their neighbor. They're probably separate from one another. This is going to take extra time for you to do troubleshooting. So expect that and budget for extra time. If, if you think it normally would take 45 minutes to do a regular face-to-face -face, uh, match, budget 60. Make sure you, you pad your schedule to allow for the extra time because it, it's not like a bell rings and we all walk into the classroom at the same time. Uh, the technology may keep us from all arriving at exactly the same time. And while it's certainly good to practice, it's better to practice in an effective environment to make it good practice by always being in the same place on the same device and the same network. Same thing goes for the players. So this is what I said on the very first slide. Think about where you're gonna be on competition day. Think about what device you're gonna use. Get into that environment, make that environment work for you and stay there. And then you'll have success with this whole concept of online competition. So what questions do we have in the chat log? We surprisingly have zero questions. Wow. Did I put everybody to sleep again? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. All the questions are going to come up when I do my portion of it. Okay. So I'll monitor the chat log from this point forward, and uh, you can take the con. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, we are going to do an actual online simulation of how to set up a match and how to actually do a match. And hopefully I can answer some of the questions you may be having as far as what are the procedures on the KAC side, but also how Quizball Pro integrates and how we're, this is all working together. So I am going to be the host computer. So the first thing I'm going to do is test my connection. So I come here, test connection. Connection successful. So that is a good thing. So I'm going to back up. I'm going to go to now host login. I'm going to log in. So if we are doing Governor's Cup, we're going to create a team. And we're going to call this Team A. 
And uh, Victor, if you would, if you would like to participate, the first six people that write the word play will be on team A. And if you could tell me their name and I can get it entered. Okay. On team A, we have Jonah, Lavelle, L A capital V E L L E. Okay. And Shelly with uh, no E before the Y. Okay. Then Emma. Okay. Sorry about my, hang on just a moment. I knew there was something I forgot to do. I forgot to turn off my office phone. That's a, another Kentucky coach contacting me. Um, you have four players, but let's go ahead and put uh, Sangita, S-A-N-G-E-E-T-A okay. on Team A. Also, Lori, L-O-R-I. Okay, we'll stop there. Okay. Then if you go to... Uh, well, go ahead and save Team A, and then I'll move on. To yeah, then, and then we'll get six for Team B. I had to minimize my chat and other stuff. So I'm going to create another team. This is gonna be team B. Okay. Yeah. We need more volunteers to be on Team B. The first player on Team B is Taylor. And then Jennifer. And then Brianna. B R I A. I A N N A. Okay. We need uh, uh, Adam. Okay. How about another for Team B? One more. Let's see who we can get to participate. Going once. Anybody want to be on Team B? Greg. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So there are players for Team B. Save. All right. So when you get your rosters for Governor's Cup, this is where you're going to enter their names. Their team name tells you the number of players. You can edit or delete them. So now we're going to create a match for Governor's Cup. I recommend naming the match the round and match number that you're playing. So for this one, this is gonna be round one, match one. Since I am an elementary coach, I am going to, or we are all gonna play virtual, the elementary version. So four players per team. We're going to have team A. So notice the first four names that you enter are the first four names that are going to be listed. They are going to be your starters. So if you know your starters in advance, I will list their names first and then everyone else after that. Say, hey, Rodney, we have a timely question uh, okay. from Taylor, which is, when creating a team, should you enter names for everyone, including subs, or only the current active players? You want to take that? Take your active players and your subs because you never know when you're going to need your subs. Yes. Enter all the names up front. Yes. All right. So when we did our match settings, nothing changes down here. So we'll have no round timer. Everyone starts with zero points. So again, change nothing here. So ringing sound, I can do this for either just me, for just the players, or for both. So for this one, let's do both. Mm -hmm. And we're going to create this match. So round one, match one, the match ID is right over here. It is CZH. 
4YC. If you're the match host, you have to click on that link before the players can log in. So if you can see my screen, the match ID is in the top left-hand corner. Let's see, we got Lavelle, got Taylor, Jennifer, Adam. Can't, can't see the code anymore. I'm sorry. There you go. Can you see that now? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So we're just okay. We've got all of Team B. Got Emma for Team A. Uh, Shelly, everything, everything okay? Remember, I said budget a little extra time. Mm -hmm. Just allow yourself some extra time. This is a normal process. Sorry, I'm not used to Zoom. So, it, is there a way to put a link in the chat for the players to click on? Or do they need to go to the Quiz Bowl Pro site and enter that code? They have to go to the Quiz Bowl Pro site. And then in the top right-hand corner, it'll say, join a match. They click that button. And then you'll get a screen that says, enter match ID. And the match ID is highlighted on my screen in the uh, left-hand corner. Once you enter that code, um, it'll say select a team, and then you select your name if you are one of the starting members. All right, so we have all eight players in. Now, just as we would do if we were in person, we're gonna do a ring-in test to make sure everything is working. So team A, Jonah, would you buzz in for me, please? Thank you. Uh, team A, Lavelle. Thank you. Team A, Shelly. Thank you. And Team A, Emma. Team B, Taylor. Team B, Jennifer. Team B, Brianna. And Team B, Adam. All right. So for this, um, Jonah, you're captain for team A and Taylor, you're a captain for team B. That is something that I would recommend. Have your captain be spot number one. And when you're in your uh, visual platform, whether it's Google Meet, uh, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, um, have them put that label on their name as well. So it'll be their school name, their name, and if they're the captain, put in parentheses, captain. That'll help the uh, judge and moderator know who, who is speaking. So we can't do a simulation without actual questions and I happen to have some in front of me. So we are going to play toss up number one. Along with thrust and drag, a flying aircraft experiences this force. It occurs because the air moves over the wing faster than it moves under the wing, causing greater air pressure below the wing than above it. <clears throat> Team B, Brianna. Lift. Lift is correct. So Team B got it correct. We hit right. So now we bring up the bonus question and you see we have 10 seconds. So I'm going to read bonus to team B. Now, I don't know if everyone's aware of how the rules work here. Everyone, the four players on team B can unmute your mics. And then after I read the question, you have 10 seconds to answer. 
after 10 seconds have elapsed, I will call on the captain, and then Taylor, you will say the answer, and then after it, say final answer. That way, we know that you, you are done giving your answer, okay? So, bonus to Team B. As a standalone word, it is a synonym of boat. Give the word that as a suffix might follow relation, champion, or friend. You have 10 seconds. Let me ship. Yep, final answer. Taylor, you have to say final answer. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Captain. Uh, I think my mic is super quiet, but I said ship final answer. That is correct. Now, it, it's probably best go ahead and let the 10 seconds run because the moderator has to call on you to give an answer. So because in that 10 seconds, you're going to be talking to your team. And just like right here, I didn't I couldn't tell when when you were giving your answer. So just wait till the 10 seconds are up. And when I say Team B captain, then give the answer. That makes it easier for the moderator and judge to hear it. All right. Toss up. Beth did her math homework in four fifths of an hour. How many minutes did she spend on her math homework? Team A, Jonah. 48 minutes. 48 minutes is correct. Bonus to team A. So team A, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Although this wind instrument was invented for orchestras and military bands, it developed a solo repertoire among jazz musicians. John Coltrane and Charlie Parker were two of its best known players. Name this instrument which, despite its appearance, is a single reed woodwind rather than a member of the brass family. You have 10 seconds. So what are y'all thinking? Are you right. thinking saxophone? Saxophone. Saxophone, final answer. That is correct. I might need to get harder questions so we can have a bounce back. All right, toss up. These insects are, these insects of the order Hermithtrida are parasites that temporarily feed on their host before returning to their hiding place. They are small, flat, oval shaped and reddish brown and feed exclusively on human blood or blood from other warm blooded animals. Identify these insects which a popular nighttime warning urges you not to let bite. Team B, Taylor. Bed bugs. That is bed bugs. Could you hear me any better now? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Bonus to Team B. Dubbed the God of Dance, this dancer and choreographer occasionally partnered with Anna, Anna Pavlova. He danced the lead roles, choreographed Michael Michel Folkskin in the Ballets Russe produ productions of Petrushka and Scherzazad, who, as choreographer, worked on the ballets The Afternoon of a Fawn and The Rite of Spring. You have 10 seconds. My guess is Barishnikov. Who was that? Barishnikov. No, I'm, I'm going to designate you. Who was that? Jennifer. <laughs> I, I'd like to designate Jennifer, please. Barishnikov. That is incorrect. Team A, you now have 10 seconds. Begin. I think Najinsky. Okay, um, I designate Lavelle. Najinsky. That is correct. Answer, sorry. That's fine. Okay, Rodney? Yes. We, we have uh, several topical questions. Um, 
two are about the bonus, which we just finished playing. Mm -hmm. One question is why wait the 10 seconds when they need to say final answer anyway? And the second question is, sounds like the opposing team will be able to hear the, the controlling team's discussion on the bonus. That is a KAC rule. Uh, they, that's out of my control. Um, why wait the 10 seconds? You don't have to, but if you notice when <clears throat> you're communicating with your team, it can get very, very jumbled and it's hard to determine when the captain is saying you know, their final answer. So that's just a recommendation. You do not have to do that. Um, but as far as hearing the other side, hearing what the other teams are saying, you know, we got to take the good with the bad. You know, we tried it with no uh, bounce backs, and a lot of coaches hated that. And so the only way we could have bounce backs back into the match was if we gave the teams 10 seconds and that they're talking. Now, bear in mind, some schools are going to allow their students to come into the building and be able to be in um, the same room when competing. So that could be something that um, helps not being able to hear what, what's being said. But I know all schools are not going to be able to do that. So this is just the way that we could cover all bases. Okay, Rodney, um, uh, one, another question just came up. Remember, on your last bonus, uh, team, a was in, uh, team A got the rebound. And yeah. Jonah, the captain, uh, deferred to Lavelle. And then Lavelle gave an answer but did not say final answer after it. Does the captain or the captain's designate have to say final answer or not? From what I've been told, they do not. It's recommended so that the moderator knows when they are done. I could tell that she was done just by the pause at the end. But again, that, that's just how I knew she was done. But for those that are not experienced uh, moderating or judging, it is helpful to have the students say final answer at the end of their answer. Okay. Now, the, the other question that I haven't posed to you, which is also uh, topical, is that on, I think, your first or second toss-up, you began reading, but you hadn't clicked the play question button yet. You came back and you hit that. And uh, a, 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 an attendee said, I noticed we couldn't ring in until he was finished reading. Will they be able to buzz in and interrupt the question? And the answer is, is yes. Uh, that, that, that was my fault on that one. So that was operator error on my end. Yeah, you just get in the habit of clicking the play question button and then reading if you're doing this by yourself or if you're supporting someone else, you know, you get into the, the dance where the moderator starts to read and you as the follower click play question. Um, Rodney, before you go on, I noticed that Lavelle's row, and I'm sure a lot of you on this call noticed that Lavelle's name switched from having a white background to having a gray background a couple of times during this match. Uh, and and if, if none of you saw that, I, I do want to stop and point that out. And I'm going to ask Lavelle, did, did you change tabs on your, your device or did you go switch programs and go answer a text or something? Or did your yeah. screen go to sleep? My screen went to sleep. I was just sitting here and I'd laid my <laughs> phone down while you all were discussing that. There you go. Thanks for doing that. Um, that ties back to my presentation where I recommended that you extend your screen timeout time. And that way your device won't go to sleep when you're looking some other direction and you're thinking about the topic. Uh, you want to make sure that your device stays live the whole time. And that's how you'll know that, that somebody's device is probably sleeping. You'll see that or that they've logged out. You'll see that row go, go gray. So I think, I think we're up to date on the chat, Rodney. All right. Oh, got someone entering. Hold on one second. All right. Let's do, we'll do a couple more questions. 
and then we'll take any other questions or concerns you may have. <clears throat> All right. Toss up. Spelling required. The magician's disappearing trick left the speechless audience aghast. Spell the word from the preceding sentence that means shocked in an upsetting way. <clears throat> Team B, Adam. Aghast, A-G-A-S-T. Incorrect. Team A, Lavelle. A-G-H-A-S-T. That is correct. Bonus to Team A. These respiratory organs are made of feathery or branched tissue that is rich in blood vessels. Some worms, almost all mollusks and crustaceans, and certain insect larvae have them, as do a few amphibians. Name these breathing organs associated with fish. You have 10 seconds. Gills. That's what I'm thinking. Gills. Yeah. Gills, final answer. That is correct. Okay, Rodney. Uh, yeah. One of the questions has to do with timeouts and substitutions. So how about we do both at the same time? Let's do it. Let me move this bar over. And so let's do a timeout. So let's say we're at halftime. You just push that button. And this is where the host will send you to either your breakout rooms or um, you go offline to uh, confer with your team. And to speed this up, we're just going to end it. Now, we're going to do a substitution. I'm going to sub Bavel for Lori. And let's do Adam for Greg. Once you make your changes, hit save. So the two names I took out have been signed out. And now the subs have an opportunity to log in. If you scroll up a little bit, Rodney, maybe Lori can't see the match ID. Can you see it in the left-hand corner there? Yes. All right. So while Lori's trying to buzz in, I'm kind of glad she's not on. So let's say for whatever reason, Lori cannot get logged in whatsoever. <clears throat> if um, if she gives me a signal or, you know, lets the moderator know she's trying to buzz in, if I come over and just click on it, I should. Well, you need to be either in a toss up or in a oh. ring in test. There we go. So if I click on her name, I can buzz in four. There you go. So, so, and that can be for anyone. Victor, I'm really hoping the phantom buzz comes in, but I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> Me too. I hope it doesn't happen. Uh, by the way, before the question comes up, uh, I, I want to, to go out front and say that uh, if, if you've been using the system for some time, you're aware of an occasional problem of the ring-in sound, the, the soundtrack basically, mainly the ring-in sounds uh, starting to fade and then going out and, and you're having to refresh. You can see the refresh button on Rodney's browser. That'll bring the sound back. But we have since the last workshop at the end of December, we have reproduced this sound problem and we are working to eliminate it. So hopefully in the next week to 10 days, it, that'll be in our rear view mirror. All right, so what do you think, Victor? Should I do a couple more questions? 
Well, let's see. Can you show, can you end the question? Let's look at that bottom row and make sure. Uh, I think the one thing we haven't shown yet. Oh, we've got Greg ringing in, but you haven't read a question. How about you end the question? I think the one thing we haven't shown is, you know, occasionally you need to edit the scores. Yeah. So we're going to end the question. So let's say after an inquiry, um, team A, for whatever reason, loses a point. So we go to edit scores. Sorry, team A, but you're about to go negative one. So you have to put the negative or the positive in front of the number in order for the score to change. So once you've done that, you hit save and then the score has changed. Quick question, this is Greg. Yes, Greg. Um, do I have to unmute my, like I've had to change screen here to unmute myself. When I rung in a moment ago, could you hear me? No. All right, so I have to make sure that I'm unmuted. Yes. Um, okay, I didn't re recognize that these would be together. That's okay, thank you. Uh, now we're getting a couple of a couple of questions in the chat log, uh, right. Rodney. One, one is a suggestion, and that's a really good suggestion. We we were having you scroll up so everybody could see the match ID, uh -huh. and one one of our colleagues today uh, cleverly pointed out that in the URL at the top of the screen, which is always visible, the last entry after the last slash, those six letters are the match ID. Learn something new today. How I about that? I'd never thought about that. Thanks for that. Okay. And here come a couple of questions. Uh, if the play question was not clicked and players had tried to buzz, but could not, will the question be thrown out? I be yes. Just as if you were playing in person, if a question was being read and more than one person was trying to buzz in and not none of the buzzers worked, um, you call an official timeout, rectify the problem, and then you move on to the next question. That the, the question is thrown out. Okay. Uh, the next question is for me. Uh, as it's written here, it says, while my team was practicing with this software, I, as the buzzer operator and host, could not see the scores at all. They just never changed, no matter how many refreshes I did. Do I have an older version or is this a glitch? Uh, this is from Shelly, so I'll, I'll direct a follow-up question back to you. The first part of your question said you couldn't see the scores at all. And then the next sentence says that the scores never changed. So at some point, were you able to see the scores? By the way, I've never, I've never seen this problem reported. So this is a uh, first for me. Uh, and the, the chat comes back from Shelly that the scores stayed at zero, zero. Oh. I have never seen that happen. By the way, did you do a ring in test, Shelly? Were the students able to ring in? Okay, so she's chatting that they were able to ring in. So that means you were able to click a ring in test button, you know, one of those green buttons there on Rodney's screen, and you were able to put a ring in button on the player's screens, and they were able to hit those. So, so the process of communicating with the players was happening, but somehow the score wasn't changing. Um, and another, another coach is saying, I also had this problem while practicing when I coached my team and then Shelly answers, the match continued as normal and the players could see the score on their screens. Well, looks like we have something to look into. I've never seen this reported, but we now have two of you indicating that you've seen this. So would you please uh, chat to me your email addresses so that I could communicate with you one-on-one -on -one about this? We need to, to track this down. Rodney, have you ever seen that? Well, that's a first for me. I haven't seen that one before. Thanks for sharing that and sharing it promptly. Sometimes, you know, when you're, when you're using this software and you run into an issue uh, and it looks like it's not operating correctly, the first thing you should do is refresh. And obviously these coaches have tried that, uh, but don't sit on a problem. Communicate immediately that you're experiencing a problem. 
Uh, it may be something that one of your colleagues is going to run into, you know, 30 minutes from now. Share it with us as quickly as you can, and we'll get started researching it. Maybe it'll go away by the time the next person experiences it. Okay, I don't see any more questions in the chat log, Rodney. I, I think we've shown, you've shown substituting players, editing scores, timeouts, ring-in tests, playing different kinds of questions. Um, the only thing to do is to end the match unless you know of something else that you might want to refer to. No, the, the, the main things are what we covered. So when the match is over, you come down to end match. It's going to ask you, do, are you sure? Yes. So everyone that I just had in should be logged out now. And now I have run one, match one completed. And I can stand by for what next teams are going to be playing. We have another question, Rodney. It says, so when competing, do we just need audio with students or do we also need visual? Audio, definitely. Visual, if you want your um, subs to watch. Or if you, as the coach, if you're not in the same room as the team, if you want to see the score, then you'll need visual as well. Well, maybe the question also refers to having the players on camera. Yes, they'll need to be on camera. Okay. Um, we, ha we have another question. This one's directed to me. Uh, when I said a player could not hear or respond, they can still play. How is that possible? Uh, the answer is if, if you've got a player in the match, they're, they're one of the top four players. They're supposed to be in the match. They're on the conferencing system like zoom or go to meeting or whatever. So you can hear them. If they can get your attention, if they can slap or call their name or get the host or buzzer operator's attention in order to indicate that they know the answer, then you as the buzzer operator can step in and ring in for them manually the way that Rodney just did. Um, another question, Rodney, is after the match, can you view the scores? And the, the answer to that question is that if you go back to the match itself by clicking on the match ID, you can see the aggregate scores for the teams. There's the final score, four to three. But we're working on a feature, it'll take us several weeks to complete, that will produce a score sheet for you that gives you a detailed report on how each player did on each question in the match. The, 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 count, the electronic counterpart to you're filling out a score sheet manually, which for the time being, you're gonna to need to continue to do. All right. Um, another question is, is there a way to create a match to use continually for practice purposes? I, uh, Victor, I think that'll be more on your end. I don't think so, because once you end the match, you can't go back into it. That That's correct? right, because if you look at this screen here, this is a completed match. And yeah, at the double. bottom of the screen, there's only an edit scores button. There are no play buttons. So when you've completed a match, which you should always do in order to boot all the players out so they can go to their next match, you, you, this, this match is complete and it can't be reused. But the settings can be reused. All you do is go create another match, choose a settings file like Rodney did, choose the teams, and go ahead and play. Of course, if it's just for practice purposes, I guess I guess a way to do this is to set up a match that's just for practice purposes, put your players in on the different rosters, and just don't end the match. When you want to reuse it, first thing you might do at the beginning of the match is edit scores to make everything zero and keep going. Good question. That was a brain teaser. You want me to – Does I want to know, is there a way for me to tell if everybody understood – Understood what I just said. How about you do this, Rodney? Go create a new match. And let's make it between team A and team B. Okay. Same as you did before. And let's call it practice. There you go. 
and then choose the settings file. Okay, and seat the teams. Okay, and all we gotta do is save that, we're done. So this is gonna be our template. We're gonna use it over and over in practice. So let's go play one question or at least simulate playing one question. Why don't, cool. you, why don't you play a toss up and have somebody ring in, just ring in for them manually. Okay, play question, does it, does it, does it, does it. Okay. okay. And let's say they get it right. Okay. And let's say you do that over and over and your practice is over. So don't end this match because you're just using it for practice. So go back, navigate back to host settings there by using the drop down menu in the upper right next to the logo. There you go. So we're done with practice. Now fast forward to tomorrow. Same teams come in and you want to pick up where you left off. Rodney's going to go restart that uh, that practice session, and if it if the score matters to you, you'd start out by editing the scores to take two away from Team A, and you're good to go. There you go. That's what you might do for practice purposes. I think we're up to date on all the questions. If, if, if I missed any of your questions in the chat log, if you feel like you weren't heard, your question wasn't answered, please resubmit it because we want to make sure we answer all of your questions. Absolutely. And I'm going to put my email address in the chat. So if you have any questions or concerns between now and Governor's Cup, please let me know. And Rodney, will you please share this chat log with me after the session? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. If there is nothing else. Oh, you guys are very welcome. Very can welcome. I ask a, can I ask a quick question? Uh, because I had this in another competition, happened in uh, a different competition. Sure. Uh, so if a, if a player buzzed in and and then they had a lag, like a Wi-Fi. They just lost their Wi-Fi. So would you wait for them to answer? Um, and how long? Like, because I, I think you can see probably someone if someone's Wi-Fi is lagging. So um, would the rules allow you to wait for them to answer? As it's been explained to me, if it's a known Wi-Fi issue, you can allow it once, maybe twice, but the third time you may want to start looking at uh, subbing that player because that's the longer it's taking them to answer, the longer the match is going to drag. And if you're in district or regionals, you've got two and three matches going simultaneously. So you want to just keep that in mind. If if it's a known issue, you may want to try to have them in the school building with you, just in a different room. That that could help um, with as far as speed of uh, internet goes. Does that make sense? Yes, but if it just happens once, like you know, when they buzz in and some, it ha like they just let lose their Wi-Fi. If it's once, they will be allowed to kind yeah, of. Yeah, well, they are allowed to. Yes, that is. Fine. Yeah. Okay. And what, what happens if they don't get Wi-Fi? Then what's the procedure? Like, what would you do? Uh, then you call, then it's an official timeout, and then you'll need to sub that player out. Okay. And then that basically, that question will be thrown out or something. Thrown out, and then we, we move on. Okay. Thank you. You're very yeah. welcome. By the way, there's there's one question that I, I didn't mean to overlook. I want to go back to uh, the manual ring in will not work if we have two teams playing remotely. Right. And and my answer to that would be find a means for a player to identify themselves. Like, for example, if my if my buzzer for some reason wasn't working and Rodney read a question and I wanted to ring in, uh, I just put the word buzz into the chat window or I could put in anything. Uh, and if, if remember in my presentation, I talked about having one person operating the conferencing system and one person operating Quiz Bowl Pro. If you've got one person 
monitoring the chat window like I am on behalf of Rodney right now, then seeing that come from Greg, who was the person who asked the question, I would then prompt Rodney that we have a ring in from Greg. That's, that's the best that we can do in this kind of environment, but it, it is functional uh, as long as you can get word to the, the host quick enough that someone has rung in. And of course, another question is, will this training be recorded on the KAAC website? And that's a question for you. It is being recorded as we speak. As soon as we're done, I will download it from Zoom and send it to um, Mr. John Bennett and he will put it on the KAAC website. I have another final question. I missed an answer to somebody had asked about, um, the, uh, is it a requirement that the visual should be on? And um, same thing, because in, in our showcase match, I think some kid was having trouble with um, the Wi-Fi so that their, the video camera was on, off. So what is the rule going to be for that? So that you know play, it's fair for all everyone and no one gets answers fed or cheats. As, as I have been told, we have to have a visual on all players that are playing at that time. So they have to have a either their laptop with their webcam facing them and they play on their phone or some means of them being seen on the video conferencing um, website. But they have to be seen. Okay, thank you. And this gets back to a point that I made early on, which is that you should find a place early on in your practice time, find a place where you can reliably get a good signal or a, you know, a good Wi-Fi signal, or you get a good cell phone signal, find a device that's gonna work for you and test all this out and make sure you stay in that environment and use that same device and network when you actually compete. Because if you change locations or change devices right at the last minute, then, uh, and, and these, these tournaments happen on Saturdays. We're not gonna get any IT people at the schools to help us. Uh, so we need to practice in the place where we're gonna compete and stay in a successful environment to the extent that you possibly can. Um, I have a question. If we are competing at school together in our um, regular games, we just set a computer up, logged in to the Zoom or whatever, at the end of the table where our kids were seating and had a table mic that they could turn on and off for the bonuses. Is that acceptable or does every single kid that's playing have to be logged in to the, the Zoom or the Google Meet or whatever? Oh no, I, I've seen it where all four members were in the room and they had a camera on all, one camera on all four players. That yeah, is that's perfectly what we fine. That is that, perfect. That's what we've done is, is that it just seemed simpler and it kept down the, the interference and everything. Mm -hmm. I just know a lot of principals and superintendents have specific rules as far as how many can be in a room at a specific time, if they have to be socially distanced, do they have to be masked when uh, they're sitting? Yeah, our, our players were, were masked and everything, yeah. but, but our tables were big enough where they can see it. Uh, far yeah, that back. is that is perfectly fine absolutely but i just didn't know if it was a requirement that every kid be logged in so you could tell when that when they were speaking it would show up on the mic or whatever that they were the one actually doing the speaking right yeah as long as the camera can see all four players and you you know what well, the moderator and judge know who the captain is mm -hmm. uh that is that is acceptable okay that sounds good Okay, one more question, uh, Rodney, and it's partly for you and partly for me, and I'll just read it. Do we use our Quiz Bowl Pro account or do we have to make a fake account for each competition? And, and I'll, I'll answer what's technically true and, and then you can make a recommendation from your experience. Okay. Uh, if you use the KAAC sign up form that uh, is is linked on the KAAC website. Through that link, you can set up any number of accounts that you want. You can have an account, your co-coach can have an account, and you can even make up what's been referred to as fake accounts uh, to, uh, to allow multiple people to, to run matches using one account. So technically, it's possible for you to set up any number of accounts. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Rodney. 
to describe why you might do that and under, under what circumstances you might do that, if, if that's fair. So I would recommend doing that if, let's say you're in a district and you need four, uh, four quick, book, quick bowl pro operators. If you set up four counts that you, you're safe with uh, giving the email and password to, then that's fine. Just don't give them your specific one because then you never know what could happen. Um, that's the only scenario I could think of you would do that though. Mm -hmm. if, yeah. if possibly regionals because regionals is an 18. So you would need four. Right. Those two rounds. So if you were doing a regional in a school building, you might you might have rooms 101, 102, 103, 104, and send the appropriate teams into those rooms at various times. And in a virtual environment, the host is really a person operating Quiz Bowl Pro, and they could be in Timbuktu. So it's not a matter. So what you have to do is think about the virtual environment and think, oh, team A is going to compete against team B in round one, maybe in an account that you set up called room 101 or Stockton Middle School Regional 1, Stockton Middle School Regional 2. You can, you can set up these accounts to, to correspond virtually to physical rooms that you might refer to if you were setting up a bracket. And if you want to set up fake accounts, you're welcome to set up any number of them that you want. If you set up, let's say, four accounts, room one, two, three, four, for your regionals, uh, it might be a good idea to give them all the same password. That way, it'd be easier to communicate to your four operators. You know, use use the right one. I've assigned you to, you know, John has been assigned to room one for the first two rounds. He'll use the, the room one account and put in the right password to run those matches. And then maybe John is is in a different room for rounds three and four. He'll just use a different account, but it's the same password. Make it easy on those people. Hope we didn't get too far into the weeds on that one, but it is technically true. You can set up any number of accounts that you want. All right. Do we have uh, any other questions, concerns? That's all that we have in the chat window. All right. Well, I know we got another training. Um, that I know several got to get to. So we'll go ahead and shut this one down. Victor, thank you again for all your help. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. And thank you. You did a good job uh, introducing this to people in context. Thank you. I greatly appreciate it. Well, thank you all for joining us and uh, good luck at Governor's Cup, guys. Yes, good luck. Take care. Have a good one, Victor. You take care, Rodney. See you next time. All right.